Hello, I'm Alan Holtham. Welcome to another Build It With Bosch project. In this case, this rather elegant bathroom tour boy. Although you could quite easily use this, I think, as a unit in the hallway or maybe as a display cabinet in the living room. It's made from a mixture of solid timber, in this case oak, with veneered blockboard shelves. And it's dead easy to make. But of course, you'll need a little bit of help from Bosch. So let's get back in the workshop and see how it's made. This is the timber I'm going to be using, which is all American white oak. And normally you'd buy it like this, in rough sawn form. And I've just machined it all up in the workshop. However, if you don't have a planer thickness, don't worry, because you find most timber merchants where you buy this sort of material will offer a full machining service and produce all the sections you need to your cutting list. However, the one big issue with using solid timber in somewhere like a bathroom where there's going to be constant changes of temperature and humidity is the problem of stability. With all these changes, the timber is bound to move, particularly the bigger pieces like the shelves. So in this case, you're far better going for some sort of man-made panel product. So I'm actually going to use veneered blockboard. And this is just a solid core, which is actually laminated, and then it's covered with a veneer of the American oak to match the solid timber. There's no way this is going to move or twist. It's very light and it's very strong. It can be perfect for our job. The big disadvantage is, as you can see, all the cut edges look rather unsightly. So we're going to have to cover these with a lipping. So the first step is to prepare the long uprights. I already machined these to the correct section. It's now just a question of getting them all exactly the same length. And for that, I'm going to use the mitre saw. And here's your first tip for this project. When you want a whole series of pieces to be exactly the same length, don't measure and cut them all individually. If you can, stack them all together and cut them as one. That way, they've got to be exactly the same. Whenever you're using machinery or power tools, always wear appropriate PPE in the form of goggles, a dust mask and ear defenders. I've had to leave these off in some of the shots so I can still talk to you. Now I need to mark these out for the cross rails. So once again, for accuracy, lay them out on the bench all together and mark them across as one. And then again, everything will line up perfectly. The next step is to cut the 10 short cross rails. And uh, another good way of getting lots of pieces like this all exactly the same length is to set up a repeat stop on the saw. The cross rails now need to be jointed into the uprights. They're a little bit too narrow to use a biscuit, so I'm going to use dowels. But do make sure you mark the face side on each piece so you orientate the doweling jig correctly each time. I'm using a 6mm drill in the jig to put two dowels into each rail. Then, with all the holes drilled in the rails, you can transfer the jig to the uprights and drill for the corresponding dowels. So, that's all the holes drilled in the uprights and hopefully now you can see the importance of always working from the face side on each piece. It's very difficult with this type of doweling jig to get the holes to line up perfectly central. But it doesn't matter, provided you're working from the face side on each component, when you put them together, the surfaces are bound to end up flush. Now at this stage, we need to just think ahead a little bit and decide how we're going to join the blockboard shelves onto these cross rails. I've decided to use my biscuit jointer and set it up for number naught biscuits. In these situations where you're dealing with small components, it's often much safer and easier and more accurate to make yourself a little work holder. And this will also allow you to line up the biscuit jointer for each cut without having to mark each component. 
Remember, don't put a biscuit slot in the top two rails. There's no shelf attached to these, they need to be left plain. The veneered block board for the shelves comes in large 8 before sheets. We need to cut this up really accurately. So I'm going to use my GKT55 saw along with the FSN rail. You can very easily join two lengths of track together for the initial long cut. You can see that the first cut on a new track shaves a bit of the rubber back so that it's flush with the edge of the saw blade. All you have to do then for further cuts is line this cut rubber edge up against your pencil line and that is where the blade will cut every time. You need four shelves exactly the same length so set up some sort of stop to make sure they are all spot on for length when you've cut them. And whilst you've got that length stop set, cut the three back shelf up stands as well. These have to be obviously exactly the same length. Now before I go any further, and before the biscuit jointer settings get altered, I want to cut the matching biscuit slots in the end of these shelves to match those in the cross rails. And I've got to work out exactly where that's going to go relative to the shelf itself. Now in these situations, as my small brain, I find it easier to just do a quick mock-up of where everything's going to be and mark off from that rather than try and work it out. So this is the shelf itself. This is the upstand that's going to go on the back. This is a little off-cut of the main upright. So if I put that in position, and now I can see exactly where that cross rail is going to be. And I can mark slots on the end of the shelves and that should now all line up perfectly. So now you can just scribe these marks on the end of each shelf and use that as a template for all the other ones. But make sure you mark the back and the top of each shelf so you get everything in the right place. And it's worth just doing a test to make sure it does line up properly. There we are, nice and flush at the bottom. Then, while you've still got the biscuit jointer set up and still on the same settings, another job is to join the upstands onto the shelves. There's three of each of these, three upstands, three shelves. They need to go like that. Just a couple of biscuits in each is all you need. If I then put a biscuit in each of the slots, it should then hopefully fit nice and flush with the back of the shelf. There we are, perfect fit. I think that's enough cutting and doweling and biscuiting for now. Time for a break, but come back for part two and we'll carry on.